Hi art friends! This week, week three, we're going to still be working on line. We're going to do a cool little lesson called taking a line for a walk. You'll see why it's called this in just a minute. You'll be seeing and making all kinds of abstract lines, shapes, and designs, and in the process, create some really cool negative space. Negative space is a space around an object. For this lesson, you'll need a piece of white paper. I would use thicker paper since we will be painting. You can use your sketchbook as well. You will also need a Sharpie marker to draw your lines. If you don't have a Sharpie, you can use a black pen or a black crayon, but Sharpie does work best. The last materials you will need are your watercolor paints and a small brush for those little tiny designs. If you don't have watercolors, but you do have a paintbrush, you can use washable markers for the same sort of painting effect. If you don't have any markers, or maybe you just don't want to paint, you can still use any coloring material for this project. At the end of the video, I'll show you how to use the marker method, and if you like this lesson, you could try it a variety of ways as well. First, I want you to draw a frame around your paper like we did last week. We're going to start at the top left corner or side with this line and take it for a walk all the way down the paper. We'll be using a continuous line, which we know all about, so go really slow. Let your brain relax and try to remember all the different kinds of lines that you know. You can use a combination of straight, wavy, zigzag, bouncy, and even lines you make up in your head. You're going to take that line all the way to the right and then continue it on another row, but this time going to the left. It's going to go back and forth, back and forth, all the way across and down your paper. Remember to go really slow and take a break if you need to. Just put your Sharpie right back down where you left off. Make sure your line never stops and make sure it never touches itself. This method is going to create a really cool design and create all kinds of negative space around the designs. When you get to the bottom, make your line go right off the bottom of the page. Now that we're done, it's time to paint. You want to get out all of your painting supplies. You'll need your paint, of course, and a paintbrush that is a smaller paintbrush because we have tiny little designs we need to paint. You don't want to go outside of the Sharpie line. You will also need a piece of paper or a paper towel to plan out your color scheme. I'd like for you to use a rainbow color scheme for this project, mostly because those colors blend together so well and it will be a good practice anyway. So go ahead and take your brush and get a little red paint. Just make a little stripe of red. Wash your brush and grab some orange. If your paint is dirty like mine and is gross, you can use water and go back and forth from the water to the paint to clean your paint. Ah, there we go, much better. Nothing like a little artistic problem solving. Now the yellow. Wash your brush, wipe your brush, and green. Wash your brush, wipe your brush on the side of the water cup, and blue. Wash the brush, and finally purple. All right, there's my color scheme. I am ready to paint. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a little red on my brush and paint the first section over my line. I'm going to be very careful because I don't want to go over that Sharpie line. Use the very tip of your small brush to get in all the tiny little spaces. Now I'm going to wash my brush. When you wash, just swish and wipe the bristles lightly on the side of your water cup. With watercolors, you have to use water to make them work, but you don't want to use too much water because it will make a mess and go all over your paper. If you get too much water, you can use a paper towel to soak up some of that water or blot your brush on. Speaking of water, if you have more water, your color will be light. If it's too light, you can just grab a tiny amount of paint and it will get darker. Watercolors take practice, so remember, we're all learning. If it isn't perfect the first time, try it again and use your mistakes to learn what not to do the next time. When you make it to the end of your row, just move down to the next row and keep going. When you've finished your last color, purple, you will start over with red. Think of your color scheme like a color wheel. The colors just keep going around and around, blending right into each other. If you forget, you can use your color scheme guide to find your place to see where you left off. If your colors aren't blending in enough, you can use a tiny, tiny amount of clean water on your brush to blend them. I'm just going to go ahead and speed this video up while you're working. Don't forget, if you need to, you can always rewatch the video. Look how cool this looks. I love how interesting the colors look when they all blend together. And check out all that crazy looking negative space. 
Space is another element of art. So what elements of art did we use for this lesson? If you said line, shape, color, and space, you were correct. Here's the alternate version of this lesson, using only markers and water. You want to start the project the same way. Draw your frame and take your line for a walk all the way across and down your paper. Instead of painting though, use markers and a quick little outline of the basic shape to add color. Use the same rainbow color scheme. When you're finished, take your brush and water cup and just lightly paint over the marker lines. Be really careful to keep the water in the Sharpie lines. The water almost melts the pigment in the marker and turns it to paint. Pretty cool, huh? Upload your project to Artsonia when you're done in the gallery called Take a Line for a Walk. Take a really nice straight picture because I have a feeling these are going to be amazing. I hope you've enjoyed week three of art, practicing what we're learning about the element of art, line. Stay tuned next week when we do a lesson on shape.